Hey everybody, welcome. This is the epic fail of Arturo Zamora and chapter nine. So you should be following along in your book as you're listening to me read aloud. Uh, chapter nine, keep calm and dale, a dialogue. The next day, Bren invites us over to jump in his bounce house. There is a slide attached to it that leads to Bren's pool. When it gets too hot, we like to slide into the water to cool down. Mop is already there, bouncing with Bren. Me. Guys, something awful happened yesterday. Bren. Did you lose an arm? Me. What? No, Bren. My arm is clearly still attached to my body. But right. Good thing, dude. Me. You know that guy who threw in a bid for the lot by the restaurant? Wilfredo Pipo? Yeah. He's got this mega building he's planning to construct right on Main Street. My dad told me about that. I can't believe it's going to have a movie theater inside. What? A movie theater? Dude, that's the awesomest thing I've ever heard. I mean, yeah, that is pretty cool, but there's something really bad about it. La Cocina de la Isla isn't in his building plans. If he wins, I think he's going to fight to have La Cocina torn down. Bren jumps back like he has just heard a gunshot. Who does that perfectly dressed man think he is? Why are you yelling? Are you not listening? La Cocina de la Isla is under attack by an amazingly smooth dude who wants to build a sick, state-of-the-art building. That would be terrible, man. I know. People work at La Cocina. People who aren't just my family. We can't leave them without jobs. Hold up, bro. They're cooks and waiters. They can find jobs anywhere. I feel blood rush to my cheeks and a sudden urge to tackle Bren. Mop notices and steps between us. Bren, this is bad news, okay? You should be more sensitive. I know. I'm just, I don't know. Are you crying? What? No, shut up. Bren acts like an idiot when something scares him. His favorite restaurant in the world is La Cocina de la Isla, where most kids wanted themed birthday parties at chained restaurants. Bren always wants Abuela's legendary arroz con pollo and La Cocina's famous homemade mint juice. I'm sorry, dude. I, I just couldn't stand to see La Cocina go. Al restaurante, mi patria. I mean, we got to do something. Don't start talking like that again, dude. Like what? Like your pit bull. Man, don't diss me, homie. I'm from the 305, Dale. Representar, mi gente. You realize you sound like an idiot, right? Guys, focus. What should I do? Bren makes a fist, taps his chest, and extends his arms to fist bump me. We got this, hermano. Why are you doing that? That's how we do it in Havana. We fight back. You are not from Havana. Your mom is originally from Cape Cod and your dad had family on the Mayflower. You shouldn't be hating like that, dude. No es cool. How did you find all this info out, Arturo? Wilfredo's office with Carmen. He gave this whole presentation about how the building would be good for the town and how this is just the beginning. That sounds ominous, dude. Did you tell your mom? Not yet. What did Carmen say? I, um, I, she was, um... Mop and Bren look at me suspiciously. Dude, did you wear what I told you to on your date? It wasn't a date. We were spying on Wilfredo. Hey, man, whatever you want to call it. Spy mission with your god sister or date with a gorgeous Spanish girl who has an adorable accent. Let the man be, Bren. He's confused enough as it is. I suddenly don't feel like bouncing anymore. I expect daily reports on your progress, Arturo. I'm leaving you my Black's Law Dictionary. There might be some legal info you could use to battle Wilfredo. And remember, my dad works at City Hall. If you need any help from him, just ask. Thanks, dude. Bren bounces and talks at the same time. The more details, the better, especially if you two make out. What? Carmen, dude. You guys have been spending some serious QT together. Bren pretends he is dancing with someone, then twirls around and tries to dip himself. Instead, he falls back and rolls into a corner of the bounce house and gets stuck. We hop over to lift him up, and when we finally drag him to his feet, he jumps right back into his story. Hey, just tell her, Carmen, me and more. I love you, baby. Mop and I stare while Bren wraps his arms around himself and twists his neck, pretending to kiss someone. You look like a zombie trying to eat its own neck. Bren stops and turns around. Arturo, obviously Carmen is interested in you, hanging out with you all over the place, chilling with Abuela. The girl is totally into you. You're crazy, dude. No way she likes me. And anyway, if she did, I'm not interested in her like that. Mop and Bren stop bouncing and give each other a look. What? I don't like Carmen. Guys, it's just... The people in the neighborhood looked like they really supported Wilfredo's proposal, you know? 
And what's going to happen to the restaurant if Wilfredo builds that massive high rise? Remember what Pitbull says. Keep calm and dolly. I can't believe a Pitbull quote is actually making sense. It does. I mean, yeah, of course it does. What's my point? That you have to keep going no matter what. You have to fight like you believe you can win. Like you and Carmen. Could you stop talking about Carmen? You got it. We're here for you, Armano. Mop rolls his eyes. Bren either doesn't notice or pretends not to notice. He pulls out his cell phone to check himself out on his camera. Guys, I think I'll have a full beard by the time we're in eighth grade. You're going to have a full beard in three months? Don't be jealous. Bren rubs his face quietly and Mop shakes his head. I wonder why we're friends sometimes. I manage a smile. I'm going to miss them when they leave. The next day, I go to Bren's house to say goodbye. Mop is there to hang while his parents get everything ready for the drive north. Bren comes out of his room, sporting a half-unbuttoned Gaiabera and a rhinestone cross dangling from a sparkly silver chain. It looks like it's from his mom's jewelry box. Mop's parents eventually pick him up, and they drive off to Withlacoochee River Wildlife Exploration Summer Camp, somewhere in central Florida. Bren's ride to the airport shows up, and as I say goodbye, I get that sinking, empty feeling when someone leaves, but you stay behind.